Hey everybody, this is Nick Chalon, the founder of Assage, uh, bringing GPT to government teams and the former chief software officer for the Air Force and Space Force. Today we're going to do a video to do a follow-up on our previous videos because we're getting so many questions about the new features we brought this month to Sage. So let's get started. All right, so first of all, here you can see now that you have the ability to become a paying customer of Sage to get uh, your 500,000 tokens for Query. Those are using the DaVinci model. Uh, you're also getting 100,000 tokens of the DaVinci model uh, with uh, this membership of 30 bucks a month. But you get access to GPT-3.5 for uh, DaVinci and Cohere. It's just a different ratio of tokens. So what's clear to understand is uh, GPT-3.5 is the cheapest model. So use it for everything when you can. Uh, unless it's not able to do what you want. A GPT-3.5 is 10 times cheaper than DaVinci. So when you use uh, a GPT-3.5, effectively you have 5 million tokens to spend instead of 500,000. Also to understand is GPT-4 is 5 times more expensive than DaVinci. So when you use GPT-4, you use 5 times more token than if you were using DaVinci or 50 times more token than if you are using GPT-3.5. So you GPT-3.5, if it's not able to do something, then you clear the chat and you go to DaVinci. DaVinci uh, will be able to do most of the things. And then if you still can do what you're trying to do, go on GPT-4, particularly if you want to do long texts. Uh, GPT-4 uh, token limit is 8,000, so you can do way more, double more than uh, what DaVinci and GPT-3.5 can do. So when you click and uh, become a, a customer, you're going to be redirected to our uh, Stripe page, payment page, and you can pay uh, your monthly fee. It's only 30 uh, bucks per month per user, and you get 500,000 DaVinci tokens and 100,000 uh, training DaVinci tokens, or 5 million uh, GPT-3.5 query tokens. So keep that in mind. All right, so one of the new features we also release is you can now edit your chat here and so you can type the name so this was a javascript code so i can just rename my chat and now um, it's going to keep uh, my name so i can find my chats uh, more easily you also see a copy uh, feature here uh, to copy the entire response and of course for for source code uh, you're going to see that we can also copy uh, just this uh, link here we'll copy the code itself uh, here you also see uh, a, a thumb down, down button here. That thumb down button is uh, to let us know that the answer you're getting either has a bug or an issue. Don't tell us when the bot is just giving you the wrong answer. That's not something we can really fix, but uh, it's mostly your prompt engineering, and we'll talk about that today. Uh, but if you see bugs or issues, uh, please report it here. Also, in the modify your account here, you're going to see a few more things. Uh, you're going to see your total number of... of uh, of tokens used per month and uh, both for the query and the training you're going to see the data sets you have access to and you can register with your CAC if you already created an account and you want to authenticate with a CAC for DoD you can do that here. Alright so another feature we created um, is we can uh, ingest data with different data sets now so let's say I want to create a data set uh, let's say um, add data set and I'm, I'm going to call it Nick uh, Public. If I do that, I have now a new data set. In fact, if I go into my account here and I scroll down, you're going to see this new uh, Nick Public data set here that was created here. Um, so now I have access to the, this data set and I can uh, simply now uh, train data to it. So I could say uh, train and I'm going to do the brackets here. Uh, so this is a syntax you have to follow. So two uh, brackets uh, and then the, the, the name of your data sets and then two more brackets. And then you, t you type the, the text you want to ingest. So I could say uh, Nick Shillon's favorite uh, TV show is Colombo. I know it tells you it has ingested it. And it took 12 tokens to ingest that. <clears throat> so now I could ask, you know, what is uh, Nick Shillon? Uh, favorite show and it's telling me uh, my uh, response here so and you see now we have follow-up questions popping up what is Colombo about 
uh, you know, why do, do I like it and stuff like that. Um, so now we ingested that. Now what's interesting is we have a slash get command. So if I want to find, you know, a data that I trained uh, specifically and I want to I want to find it, I can just, just do slash, you know, get Colombo. And here is my ingestion. If I want to delete it, I can copy and paste this ID here and I just do slash delete. And now it was deleted. So if I do slash get, there's no result, right? So this is how you can train data. And if you made a mistake and you want to change it, uh, you can delete it and then train again. So that way you're not stuck in time with the training. So now you can train with different data sets. Like I said, we can add a data set and then you can train to that data set. And then we can assign the data set to users. That's something we do. You have to reach out to us. So if you create a data set and you want to share it with someone in your team, you can do that. We can assign the data set to that user. So simply reach out to us and tell us your email, your email, you, we, you tell us which data set you want to share and to which email you want to add it to. We'll be able to do that for you. Now we also added a new feature with a uh, slash train with summarization. And the reason is if you have a very long piece of text, uh, you should never ingest really more than 500 tokens. You could, but I wouldn't recommend it. But let's say you have your know, 2000 tokens and you want to ingest something very long. You can do slash train with summarization. And what it's going to do is going to ingest the full text, but it's also going to use the GPT-3.5 model to create a summary under 500 tokens of that text. That way uh, you have a smaller version uh, that can be reused. If you were to index the book, you couldn't index the whole book. You would index a chapter with summarization and then you can do a summary of the summary to get the full summary of the book. That way you get the full summary of the book, but you get the detailed version of the, the chapters and the summary version of the chapters as well. That's to uh, go around the limitation of tokens that you see with these models. So slash train with summarization will let you summarize and slash train with summarization Da Vinci will use a Da Vinci model instead of the GPD-3.5 model. But keep in mind Da Vinci is uh, 10 times more expensive in tokens. So use uh, um, the, the Da Vinci uh, only if you really need it. All right, so we've seen the slash train, slash train with summarization, slash get to get the results back, slash delete to delete a result. Um, so that really uh, gets you what you need to be able to manage your data set. And of course, the slash add dash data set to create a new data set as well. So you can add a data set, you can get the results, you can train to add, add results to it. Always give context when you train using the slash train command or slash train with summarization command. You know, don't just say, favorite show is Colombo, say Nick Shalom favorite show is Colombo. So it has context about the topic and the more the better. And then the summarization aspect will let you have a shorter version that can be used also when you query and when you search. So that gives you faster answers because keep in mind when you query the bar, we only return, you know, four to six results and we cap it at 500 tokens. So effectively anything beyond 500 tokens, the body is not even going to see it. So it's going to find it in search, but it's not going to give it as context for your query. So always summarize when it's more than 500 tokens. So another thing, again, we added, of course, GPT-4 now, but keep in mind, GPT-4 is effectively five times more expensive than DaVinci and 50 times more expensive than GPT-3.5. Uh, now, when it comes to uh, uh, Persona here, we have added a bunch of new personas and one that's particularly interesting, uh, you know, we, we have accountants, contracting officer, ghost writer to write things, um, cyber, you know, um, scientists and so on. But one that's very interesting is prompt engineer. And a lot of you have issues writing prompts to get the right answer you want from the bot. Don't blame the bot, blame yourself. It's all about the skill of prompt engineering. And so we created a persona to help you write a better prompt. So uh, let's go to the chat. And if I say, you know, um, um, I'm trying to write a prompt um, to uh, uh, create, to write an RFP answer 
to uh, a DOD, a, a, a Department of the Air Force um, uh, bid about uh, DevSecOps, and we would like to uh, prepare our response to show why the Air Force should pick us uh, thanks to our expertise in DevSecOps creating the DoD Enterprise DevSecOps reference design um, and let's see what it says. All right, so now it's saying, okay, here's a revised prompt and then it's asking me questions. Um, do you have any information to refine the prompt? Um, and that's where, you know, it is giving you uh, specific uh, uh, ideas, right? Um, for example, you could you could talk about, um, you know, the experience of, of doing this, you know, more references, um, uh, and it's going to help you by asking you questions, right, to improve your prompts through a series of questions. Um, and that's always interesting. So we could say, yes, in our team, we have uh, Nick Chalon, the founders of the uh, DevSecOps initiative in DoD. Um, what else do you need to improve this prompt? Here's a revised prompt. So we have a new revised prompt. Uh, does this work for you? So, and, and of course, depending on the subject, right, it's going to give you different ideas. And he's going to ask you different questions and he's going to refine and uh, get you more and more uh, details in your prompt. So now you can simply copy and paste it, right? And then you go into um, a new chat and you pick the contracting officer, for example, persona here for this use case. And you ask it to write uh, the response, right? And now it's going to have more insights and it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you more, more details. Of course, if you want to have a broader, uh, more e e extensive reply, you want to add words like detail, concise, right? So all this prompt engineering work is facilitated by the uh, prompt engineer persona. So you can always go back or, or create sections, right? So you could say uh, section... 1.1, 1.2, and, and do different prompts uh, to effectively get where you want to be. And, and once you have uh, a prompt you want to reuse that you f you find is very efficient for your company, um, we have this new feature prompt template here, and you have public public prompt that we give to everybody to help for some things. But yet then you have the private prompts, and in private prompts you can add the prompt here, and you can even make it public so everybody can see it if you want to help others. Uh, do better and you put your prompt your title your description and then it's gonna be so I can say you know template um, for RFP answers this is for RFP answers for air for, for DAF work uh, DAF DevSecOps work and then I add the prompt and I pick the persona contracting officer and I submit and now I have this prompt and I just click on it and it's pre-populating it here and I can just tweak it and, and submit it. So this facilitate your management of prompt and this persona, uh, the prompt engineer persona really helps you um, do better at, at asking questions. So obviously you can give more context and the more context you give, the more information you give about the bid, you can even copy and paste the bid, right? You can you can uh, ask it to summarize the bid or the key, key components of the bid. What is the most important piece of the bid? So by asking questions, right? The body's gonna learn and you can summarize and even train with summarization the whole bid, right? So then you can summarize it for you and then you'll be able to uh, provide the best answer and even cut it into sec sections, right? Uh, replying to a whole bid of 80 pages is probably not a good idea unless you're gonna use the GPT-4, uh, but I would recommend cutting it into sections and try it that way. With that, wanted to thank you again. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to us on Discord. Here's a link. And then, of course, uh, never hesitate to reach out to us by email at sales at assage.ai. Thank you.